artist friends welcome to the august edition of mixed media menagerie i think i say this every month but i'm seriously cannot believe it's august already we just have four more months of menagerie this year and of those four months we have two spots open for guest artists and i'll share a little bit more about that at the end but start thinking if you want to apply for one of our guest artists this year again there's only two more spots available I began this month by the usual, <laughs> jessoing my pages first, so now I'm adding some ephemera. These are um, book pages that I received in my A House of Books subscription box. It was the July subscription box. I have an unboxing and more information available. I'll link all of that below. I'm layering a bunch of different types of book pages here. I wanted several different colors and fonts, and then the edge of one of these book pages was like, it looks like it had been water stained, I think. And so I thought, usually I rip all those edges off of the book pages because they're kind of pointless. They don't have any text on. But these edges, you can see them on the right there, were really cool and distressed and stained up looking. So I'm going to add some of those to the right, the left, and the inside as well. I'm continuing to add those book pages and those really cool stained edges with matte medium on the left and the right, layering them up and spreading them all about because I have a plan in mind this month. And now that those pages are dry, I'm adding some watered down gesso kind of to bring those bits and pieces of papers together and make them look cohesive, but it's also adding to my plan. So this month we added graffiti as our theme and I love like city walls that are full of graffiti and posters and layers and layers of just interesting things to look at. So I'm kind of trying to create my own like graffiti city wall here. So my first layer of text and now a layer of gesso. And I'm gonna continue to layer interest on these pages to kind of create that graffiti city wall look. Next I picked up some of these tags, they were by Tim Holtz and were part of a kit that we offered at the beginning of the year, I'll have them linked below, but I was trying to think through like what would be on a city wall and how can I kind of achieve that in an art journal sort of way and I thought these tags if I ripped them apart would kind of look like posters or old store signs or different advertisements. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm adding a layer of um, parts of these tags that kind of look like they're um, they're part of a wall that someone like either stapled on or taped on or glued on or whatever. Um, they're going to just add to the whole mysterious layers <laughs> that you find on graffitied walls. So this theater, um, like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's a theater paper of some sort. I was in my House of Books subscription box too and I really really wanted to include that because I think when I think of like city walls I think of posters of like performances and theater events and stuff but it was way too big for this page. You'll see me kind of contemplate once in a while if I should rip it up or include it as a tip in or how I can add it but really the colors weren't right either and the size wasn't right so in the end I decided not to include it. Um, you'll notice that there are several things throughout this process that I really wanted to include on the pages, but then I decided not to. So now I'm just adding some masking tape. So it looks like these signs are kind of taped down. And if I can be completely honest, I thought masking tape was one of our strange collection of things this month and not the stapler. So right here, not only am I adding it to add to my graffiti wall look, but I think I'm fulfilling one of my... 
um, mixed, mixed media menagerie like requirements, but in the end I realized, oh, it wasn't masking tape, it was something else. So I'll add that something else in just a little bit. And now I'm just adding some more of that watered down gesso on top of that masking tape and a little bit on those signs as well. And now that that gesso is dry, I should have done this before the gesso, but completely forgot. I'm using some matte medium on top of that masking tape. It's not always like the stickiest. And so to make sure that it's, it stays on the journal page, I'm just adding a layer of matte medium on that. And then also on top of those signs too, so that if I get any other paint on top of them and don't like them, I could wipe it off. And then I really wanted to use these old school stencils, like, 10, 15, I don't know how many years ago in the mixed media art journaling world we used those stencils before we had so many cool ones and I found them recently when I was cleaning out my studio and wanted to use them but again they were too big so instead I pulled out these mini stencils from iStencils, I'll have them linked below as well, and my black spray paint to add some graffiti to my walls. And now that my stencils are down, I'm wanting to kind of grunge it up a little, add some drips and splatters. So I sprayed a little bit of that spray paint onto a piece of deli paper, added a little bit of water, and I'm using it as paint now to kind of spread out on the pages. I'm gonna drip it and splatter it and add another layer of grunge and interest. As I was looking at my pages, I decided I needed just a little bit more of that spray paint through the stencil, so I'm adding that in those little areas that I thought needed just a little bit more. And now I'm wanting to add some texture. I kind of thought through this, I really wanted to use um, joint compound, which is really like grungy and textural and really kind of looks cool and then it would look more like a wall, but I didn't have any of it. So instead I picked up um, some of the super heavy gesso and I'm just adding it different places on the page to add a little bit of texture, really rough, um, so that as I continue to add layers of color, the color is gonna catch in them to add interest. Now Super Heavy Gesso is very thick, so I'm gonna to have to let this dry for a little bit before I continue. is actually the next day I'm not remembering or it's several hours later that super heavy gesso is dry and I'm going to add some stamped images. I'm wanting to kind of add a different shape here, a different kind of texture, something other than text and so I kind of thought about well like there's sometimes plants growing up walls but there's also really cool kind of like graffiti sometimes there's different images so I'm using this to kind of 
look like plants on the wall, but also potentially <laughs> look like spray painted graffiti. I'm using these um, stamps from Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. I'll also have them linked below. There's two different sizes of this leaf stamp and I am using it in several different ways. I'm going to use some masking tape to kind of mask some of it off and only stamp parts of it. And then I'm going to stamp different parts of the leaves so that the images don't all look the same. They look alike, but they're a little bit different because I'm, as you can see right there, obscuring some of the leaves to create different types of leaf shapes. Next I picked up this row of X's stamp that is also in one of those stamp sets wanting to create just another kind of graphic in the background. I could have made these myself and done some mark making but I took the easy way out here I guess and did stamping instead. Next I picked up this Lyra Graphic Pencil. If you've been following Mix Media, Mix, sorry, Media Menagerie this year, you know I'm trying to use this every um, on every spread to make it kind of cohesive. So I decided just to put it on the spot so that I added that super heavy gesso texture and then I'm activating it with water. It's gonna kind of pick up into that texture, into the cracks and crevices, add a, la a layer of shading as I kind of figure out where to go next with these pages. Next I picked up my walnut ink to add just a little bit more like brown to these pages. They were kind of turning a little bit um, more on the brown side so I thought I'd enhance that a little bit adding a little bit of walnut ink for some darks and to kind of bring that, um, that book page brown that's in the back layer to the forward layer. I'm trying to really kind of make these really cohesive so that each layer is kind of layered but it also um, they're covered so it doesn't look like one layer specifically stands out. I know when I look at like a building, it's really sometimes hard to figure out which layer was the last one on the building because there's so many different like spray paints and graphics and taped up things. And so that's what I'm trying to create. And so now I'm picking up my turquoise so flat paint. I'm gonna add the color to the leaf shapes on the bottom.
I'm also splattering a little bit of that turquoise throughout the pages to kind of bring your eyes up. All that turquoise is on the bottom of my page and so your eyes kind of go there but spreading it throughout the pages is allowing for some movement and also some more cohesive energy to my pages. So because everything is like so dull on these pages and that turquoise is so bright, I'm trying to kind of pull it back just a little bit so it looks a little bit more grungy. And now I'm going to add a little bit of walnut ink in with that turquoise as well to make those um, leaves look more like old, I guess, <laughs> that they've been on the building for a while so they're not so crisp. I also felt like they were looking a little mouthwash like I don't know if it was because I was recently at the dentist but they looked like they were like bright Listerine mouthwash on the pages just because they were so bright compared to all the non-color on the pages so I'm just trying to vintage them up a little bit grunge them up make them look like they've been on the building for a while now I'm picking up my black paint as well you see that I sprayed some water in there I don't recommend that for new paint um, paint cans here but this is an older one that I've been using as like a watered down version so I keep adding a little bit of paint to it and water and it allows me to have like my watered down paint at the ready I'm just spreading this around the page to bring out that black to kind of push some of those flowers to the background again I'm just continuing to layer the same colors here so that the pages look cohesive Things are covered up, but you kind of see them, but they're kind of covered and it looks, like I said earlier, like it's just a mess of graffiti and layers and layers of stuff on this building. And now it's actually like another day layer after my, oh no, I think I was supposed to use a stapler and not masking tape on my pages. So I picked up my tiny attacher and just added a few staples to those tags that are supposed to look like signs. And then I had this really cool um, numbered parking um, proof that I paid to park somewhere. It was in my car and I saw it in between. Um, working on these pages and I thought it would look really cool on my journal pages too and you're going to watch me try several ways to try to get this on the pages and then put it away and try to get it again. And now I'm adding my fluorescent which is the last thing I need to add to my pages. I decided to pick up this um, fluid golden fluorescent pink. Now as I'm using it in this video it looks like Pepto Bismol pink. It does not look fluorescent at all. I don't know why the color rendered so funny but at the end when you see the final photos you'll notice how bright fluorescent pink it really is. I'm just using it as an accent on these pages to kind of look like drippy paint on the top and the bottom and then I'm going to also add some like splatters throughout just like I did with that turquoise.
And here I am again trying to get those numbers to work to figure out how I can get them to work on the pages. I'm thinking the red looks really cool with that sign above, the pink with the fluorescent, but it's just not coming together yet. And then when looking at my pages, I felt I needed a few more of those X marks there on the top. It just was really empty and felt like I needed something in that space, so I'm adding a few more. Now I'm picking up the black again. Like I said, I don't want anything to really look like it's the top layer on the building, so I'm pushing some of that pink back with just a little, ba little bit of that watered down black paint. That's a tongue twister. And here I am again. Okay, Nicole, this is your third time, I think, trying to get this numbers to work. I'm looking at it several places, trying to layer it with that tag, which I thought was cool because the tag is from Texas, but it wasn't working. I'm turning it left and right and upside down in different pages and different spots. And then all of a sudden it hit me that it's just too big for the pages. That's what's wrong with it. It's just too big, just like that stencil I wanted to use, just like that um, playbill I wanted to use. But this one I'm going to fix. I'm cutting it down to use just a part of that number to stick on my pages. I'm sticking it down with some heavy gel. I'm gonna to top it with a little bit of matte medium so that um, whatever I put on top doesn't soak into the tag. And then once that matte medium dries, I'm gonna add a little black on top so it looks like it's embedded into the wall. I did try to use a stapler as you saw a minute ago, but it didn't quite reach to the page. And that is it. Here is my rendition of a graffiti wall on a building using um, stapler, a fluorescent, and then of course graffiti for the inspiration. And a little bit of masking tape, even though it's not the right one for this month. I want to just take a minute at the end of this video to thank you for watching to remind you to check out what Laura, Erin, and our guest artist created this month in our little collaboration of a strange collection of things. And I also remind you that we have two spots open for a guest artist. We would love for you to apply. It's just a simple process with your website and your name, nothing fancy. It's not required that you have a website, just that you have a YouTube channel, and we would love for you to be one of our guest artists. Thank you again so much for watching. Links to all the products and everything you need to know are below in the description box.